So during meditation, I just wiped my mind out of my mind, made myself uh, a blank slate, like wiping chalk off a blackboard. And I would go into full lotus uh, meditation. But after about 20 to 40 minutes, oh, my knees ached, my ankles ached, oh yeah. So I'd relax in the half lotus. And then after about 20 minutes, I noticed my spine clicked into place. I guess this was my chakras lining up. And I would float up. Yeah, okay. So much for technique. I spirited my uh, perception out of my body through the top of my skull, through the roof of the attic, over the Himalayas, and beyond planet Earth herself. This was a natural image at a time. Uh, at this time, America was uh, preparing to put the first man on the moon, Cape Canaveral, Kennedy Space Center, space exploration, thrilling mankind. <laughs> you know? And uh, Tibetans used the power of visualization to the extreme. They employ visualization like rocket fuel <laughs> to power themselves to other dimensions and levels of awareness and become other deities like Tara, Buddha. I mean, just check out their tongue. Tonkas, you know, uh, to actually become these divinities by visualizing them intently and precisely, thereby acquiring their powers and instruments to, you know, have, have all beings be happy, you know, bodhisattvas, help each other. Well, you know, Goddess Earthy, I could use a flashback to the 60s, to the hippie trip, just to spice up the story a bit. We've been talking about meditation. All right, let's go back to 1969. We freaks were confident. Uh, sometimes when we took LSD, we would unfold a map of the Earth and point to zones that attracted us that we would be stewards of and administer to. Popular reads at the time, Play Power by Timothy Leary, Doors of Perception by Aldous Huxley, the Evans Wentz books. And we thought that we hippies were taking over the planet. And um, no more hunger. Like the George Harrison Bangladesh concert, no more hunger, no more war, a kind of Sergeant Pepper's happy ending to our Earth's evolution. <laughs> and my Aries personality thrived on this warm hearted, nonviolent atmosphere. For sure, I trusted and followed my spirit wherever. Uh, no matter how weird the spiritual direction seemed, like the mystical explosion go to India, which resulted in me being right here at the Tibetan monastery. And uh, why my meditations became so powerful and extraordinary is that I was sincere and confident, potent, 100%. Well, look it, up to this time in my life, and I'm just 21, uh, reality and my perception was always monodimensional within a single dimension. Like what you see is what you get even on psychedelics, plus throwing a few dreams to spice up the, the visual trip. But this was soon to change. Thank you, Mark. Well, um, yeah, my spirit ascends in a natural sequence. Uh, you know, first my 
spirit would reside in the brain area where it normally resides, then off out the top of my uh, skull and above the landscape, with always a little golden thread, a subliminal and kind of translucent golden thread tied to my spirit, uh, to my body. An interesting and profound early insight was that during my beyond body meditations, uh, while my earth body was, you know, still existing and uh, parked on automatic pilot in the attic, uh, there was no necessity for me to lose any kind of awareness about my breathing, the tongue, my tongue touching my palate, and so on. But I would add on another faculty of awareness, a finer faculty of perception. So I realized that this meditation scene, this is the first time I've ever got into it, was not uh, like you're either in your body on earth or you're spaced out way up there. Uh, it wasn't uh, that. It was a both and. It was both you're totally aware of your body here. Uh, of it raining <laughs> and um, yeah um, at the same time you were in a transcendent dimension finer awareness what was going on here I really you just kind of stack on one level of awareness to another stacks of simultaneous awareness or or more exactly, when you transcended to a higher awareness, you included the lower foundational awareness. Transcendence and inclusion of the lower one movement. You know, like uh, molecules are made out of atoms. And to be a molecule, you have to take the atoms with you. And then molecules... Uh, miraculously became uh, evolved into living forms and the living forms needed the molecules which needed the atoms and so it's just like a big stack of pancakes really so just pour syrup over the whole thing to hell with dieting you know big stack of pancakes mm -hmm. yeah well, okay, so uh, let's get back to the meditation. My physical body is sending, and I would be in the form of myself, but a light body made out of particles, sparks of light, an anthropomorphic, you know, big monkey, smarty pants, uh, large ape type uh, mammal, <laughs> you know, and uh, my eyes would be translocated from my physical eyes in my body to the eyes of my light body. But like, look, if the, a temple attic had caught on fire, I wouldn't have been in the least danger. I would have, <laughs> what's that? Smelled smoke, got myself down the ladder with the other monks before I was endangered without, you know, uh, skipping a heartbeat. 